everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and in this video I am going to show you how I set up my OpenSUSE Leap desktop. Um, now, hopefully you saw my OpenSUSE Leap 42.1 review. If not, be sure to check that out. Um, but OpenSUSE Leap 42.1 is my new uh, main daily driver, so I want to kind of give a walkthrough of you know some of the software that I installed. Um, most of it was easily installed right through YAST, the uh, the uh, uh, package and software manager. Some of it was a little more involved, so that was the kind of stuff that I focused on. And then, real quick, I showed you how I set up my desktop. So, um, you know, let's get started. So let's start out by installing the proprietary Catalyst video drivers for my MD card. So let's open up YAST, uh, put in our password here. And let's see, we need uh, oh yeah, software repositories. Let's go to that first. So what we are going to need to do is add the community repository for um, the, the AMD drivers. So let's go to, uh, where is it? There it is, add and community repositories. Click next. and come over here and select the AMD slash ATI graphics drivers click OK and yes we want to import this key alright and we can see from the chart there that uh, this driver or I'm sorry repository has been added and is enabled so now let's go to the software manager We'll open that up, give it a second to update. Okay, now let's go up to the search box and type in FGLRX and you can see all of the, uh, the driver packages. Just select the one at the bottom to install and uh, all, the, all the remaining drivers will be installed along with it so to come down here and click continue and at this point it's just a matter of waiting for things to install now after the installation is complete you will need to go and reboot your system so that uh, the changes can take place and then you can access uh, um, the uh, catalyst control center now, as many of my regular viewers know, I use a VPN service called Private Internet Access. On their website, they have a variety of install scripts. Um, however, they don't have one that is compatible with OpenSUSE. However, on GitHub, there is a page that has uh, some install scripts. That's what I've got open right here. Um, you know, variety of distributions for some routers. So I've gone ahead and downloaded that, and I've got a, uh, here, let me get this out of the way now. And you can see i got Dolphin open here, and you can see where I downloaded the, uh, the scripts. It's a zip folder. So let's go and extract that. Extract here. And inside this folder, you can see there's all of those install scripts. So nice thing with Dolphin is they've got a lot of a lot of extra stuff that's already uh, set up on the uh, on the file browser for you so I can just right click that folder come down here to actions open the terminal here and boom it automatically opens the terminal in the correct folder and so the install script that I wanted is going to be that one right there oh while I've got that open I need to right click on that install script, go to properties, permissions, make it executable, click OK. So now come over here to the terminal, let's go sudo dot slash uh, install underscore sus.sh put in my password and 
Oh, I left a uh, I left the space there. So now, once the script's running, it's just a matter of following the instructions. They want you to add your PIA login, which I am going to, uh, so you don't see my, all my login credentials, I'm going to pause the video while I put this in. So after putting in my username and password, the script finishes with the installation and uh, you know we're all done. Closed up the terminal, and now when you come down to my um, my uh, network connections. If you click on that, you'll see all of the different um, connections that I can make with uh, private internet access. And it's just a matter of whatever I wanted to use. Go and pick that one, click connect, and boom, you're done. One of the things that I like in the GNOME and the Unity desktops is that you can hit the Windows or Super key and boom, right away you can start searching through all your applications. In KDE you can assign keyboard shortcuts to pretty much anything that you want however by default uh, the Windows key or super key whichever you want to call it uh, that that key is essentially a modifier so you need to use it in combination with something else if you want to use it for uh, you know opening an app or you know whatever shortcut you want to use however there is kind of a workaround in a little piece of software called K super key now I was digging through the open source repositories and K super key is not there at first I thought that I was going to have to download the source code and compile it myself however I did find a copy on the OpenSUSE build service. So let me drag Firefox over here and you can see you know I've got the OpenSUSE build service open projects and then this particular user they have already uh, compiled K super key. So let's go to download package SUS leap 42.1 and click OK. Give it a second here. And yep, that's what I want. Okay, super key. And click next. put in my password and there we go and now I can go and you know, if you right click on your menu go to application menu settings and then boom right there set the keyboard shortcut right here. Setting up my printer threw me a little bit of a curveball. Um, fortunately I was able to find the answer right away and it was actually fairly easy. Um, okay so a little background I've got an HP Office Jet Pro 8600 Plus. Normally on Ubuntu based distributions uh, you know this printer is networked in my home it's automatically found and uh, you know setting up the printer is you know just follow the dialog boxes in the printer settings uh, dialog here right here. so let me just show you what happens here I'll click on let me unlock it so it's unlocked click add the printer and under network printer it can't find my network printer so, okay so do a little internet searching and like I said it's it's this is real easy to do 
and um, let me copy and paste for my notes here. Open up a terminal, paste in su dash dash c hp setup, password, put in the password. This opens up the hp device manager setup. And then from here, it's simply follow the dialog boxes. Now I got a networked. Mine's networked, but I'm going to need, uh, let's see, yeah, we'll use temporary USB connection. Click next. It's plugged in. I just did that. Yes. And yep, there it is. Click on next. Give it a second to update this. All right, and we're all finished. Next thing I needed to do was install some multimedia codecs, much like uh, Ubuntu, a lot of other distributions. Uh, by default, a lot of the multimedia co codecs are not installed. So let's go and we will open up Yast. And let's go to our software repositories. And we're going to add again. Come up to the community repositories. And we're going to need to add the Pac Man repository and then also this libdvd CSS. Okay. All right. So with those repositories added, let's go and start adding the software. Of course, you could do this via the terminal as well. But, uh, you know, since I'm kind of new to OpenSUSE, I figured that uh, I'd use their package manager and, you know, see how well it works. So anyway, let's come in here and let me check my notes. And I'm just going to copy and paste from here. So we need the K3B codex. Let's go to install. And I was actually reading up on this. The option that we want to take is this right here where it says following action will be done. Install K3B uh, with vendor change. Okay, so we got that one. We need a Vempig. Okay, that's all of the media codecs, so let's go and click accept and continue. And while all that's installed, I'm going to pause the video and then we'll come back. Okay, those packages are installed. However, there's some, uh, there's a couple of packages that we can remove now. Um, now that we've got those new multimedia codecs installed. So we got the phone on backend G streamer. We're going to delete that. And this one right here as well. Phone on 4 QT5 backend G streamer. We're going to remove that one as well. And accept. And there we go. Installing VirtualBox was relatively easy. Once again, just went to the build service, did a search, and uh, you know I found a direct install here. Open Leap 42.1. I'll click install. We'll open that with Yast.
guess I have reviewed this. And at this point, it's just a matter of sitting back and waiting for the installation to take place. So I'm not going to show you the installation of every piece of software that uh, that I've installed on my system. Uh, there's really not a point to it. Other than the stuff that I've shown you so far, everything else is just going to go through the normal uh, YAS Software Center, you know, no, you know, and no special tweaks or anything like that. So probably the next thing to move on to is do a little theming. So let me first go and we'll open up our system settings and we'll do a little work here in the theming. Now the workspace theme I'm going to keep the same. I'm going to keep it with the uh, OpenSUSE at least for now. Um, color I'm going to leave that's the same for now. <clears throat> Under fonts, uh, for now I'm going to leave the Noto Sans uh, 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 font or font theme I guess you want to call it. Um, I'm going to stick with that font for now. Uh, one thing that you want to change and uh, I've already done it, but I'll just kind of walk you through it. Under any aliasing, you want to want to have that enabled, and then sub pixel rendering. I set it for RGB, and then heading style slight, and that'll give you a little better font rendering on uh, the GTK uh, uh, applications. So got that taken care of. Under icons. Uh, I've already installed the Masala theme, so I'm going to switch to that. Um, it's a it's a theme that I've been using recently on all my desktops. Really like it. Um, so got that taken care of. Application style under widget style, I'm going to change from the default breeze theme to Qt curve. Uh, that's my preference. All right, there's Qt curve. Window decorations. Uh, I have already installed the Evolver light theme and I'm going to go with that. Click apply. Yeah, that is much more to my liking. And you know, on the theming, everybody's going to be different. Um, so, you know, pick something that you like and, uh, uh, you know, don't just go for something because that's what I'm going with because, you know, what I love, another person's going to hate. Anyway, moving on, under here under GNOME applications, this will be your GTK applications. So I'm going to, on the uh, GTK themes, I'm going to go ahead and move that to QT Curve. Uh, GTK 3 themes, I'm just going to leave it with Breeze. Uh, I'm going to leave the fonts the same for now. Um, under Icon themes, I'm going to use the Masala theme there as well with the fallback theme being breeze dark. Let's click apply there. All right, and that pretty much takes care of the theming aspects. Um, now let's set up the desktop the way that I want it. Um, I don't like the panel across the bottom. I like it across the top. Uh, you know, there's, there's two things that I could do here. I could go and you can go to panel options and do a remove panel and build a new panel on the top or well I'll kind of show you both ways to do it one you could go into panel settings open that up and then where it says screen edge just grab it drag it to the top and now you're now it's up at the top for you um, you can go that route or I'm going to close that up or you can go into panel options and oops panel options and remove this panel and so now it is completely gone now you want to add another add a panel just right click your desktop go to add a panel you can either do de default panel or empty panel empty panel you know just what it says it's an empty panel um, move it around add whatever you want to it you can also do a uh, there we are. Default panel. And there you see you've got a default panel across the bottom. Of course, now once again, we've got to move it to the top. Um, you know, for me, the way that it's set up is pretty much okay, other than the fact that I want it, uh, want it on the top. So let me just grab it, throw it up to the top. Actually, first... 
Let me move that out of the way, and I want I want to get that out of the way. And now we can drag that to the top. And uh, as far as the height goes, that's that's fine with me. Um, so if you wanted to go and add some other stuff to it, you just go to Add Widgets, pick out what you want. And you can see you got a, a variety of different things here. Um, myself, well, let me find it. And you can do a search or you can just kind of scroll through here. Um, got this lock and log out button. And I'm going to grab that, add it over here. Now let me go and do a little configuring on it. Lock and log out. I don't need a lock. I just want a, um, you know, a, a way to to uh, log out. Click apply. Now I'd like to make that a power button. And um, over at Quid's Up's site or a uh, YouTube channel, he had a great little tutorial in it. Uh, so that you can make this into a power button instead of a log out button um, and let me find it here we we'll do start up and shut down yeah under desktop session come here and rather than end current session change the default leave option to turn off computer and click apply so now, when you click on this button, you're gonna, it's going to shut down the computer for you. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to do it because I've got it set so that you don't have that, uh, that delay. You know, mine will shut right down for me. Um, so I don't really want that going on. So, but anyway, this is essentially what I want for, for my layout. Um, now, right now, that's the particular menu that I've got, and I'm going to play around with, um, you know, you've got a couple of different menu options here. Uh, see where it says alternatives after right-clicking. There is this launcher that I've been using. There's the traditional launcher. There's the full-screen application dashboard. So let me switch it over to that. And now you can see when I uh, when I um, hit the Windows key, this is what I get. It's it's somewhat like the uh, uh, the GNOME Overlook or or GNOME. I, I'm not sure what the what the uh, uh, exact name for it is, but uh, you know very much like in uh, in the GNOME dash dashboard. That's what I was trying to think of. Anyway, so you get this kind of look. Um, and then you could look for, oh, let's say Firefox, and just do a keyboard search that way. Now myself, I'm still, I'm still um, trying to decide whether I like that full screen setup or whether I want to stick with the menu based. Um, you know, both of them have a search function built into it, so it's kind of, eh, either one kind of works. So uh, jury is still out on that one. Well, that just about finishes things up here. Hopefully you found it uh, informative. It helps you out and maybe gives you some ideas, that sort of thing. Uh, and I will try to keep everybody updated as far as how, uh, you know, maybe a one-month update or whatever on how everything's working with, uh, with this desktop for me. Uh, and I also plan on doing a few follow-up videos. Um, not Well, not really follow-up videos, but just basically using... Uh, OpenSUSE Leap to demonstrate how to how to use various pieces of KDE software like you know there's a lot of function built into Dolphin um, and and you know probably 75 percent of the people out there don't utilize it or don't even realize that it has that function in, uh, already installed for you I'm going to kind of walk through how to use a lot of that stuff so uh, be sure to uh, watch for those videos as always, leave comments, questions, all that kind of stuff down below. I try to get to it as soon as possible. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe, and I hope to see you on my next video. Thanks a lot.